Hey guys, welcome back. Today we will discuss about Mendes status examination or how to write Mendes status examination. Mendes status examination is playing a major role in the diagnostic process of mental health problems. What is Mendes status examination or MSC? MSC is a structured way of observing patients' appearance, attitude, behavior, mood, effect, speech, thought process, thought content, perception, cognition and insight. So these are all the components of Mendes status examination. And what is the purpose of Mendes status examination means it allows the clinician or the psychiatrist to make an accurate diagnosis and proper formulation of plan of care. So in Mendes status examination, there are some specific components and the components of the Mendes status examination are general appearance, emotions, thought, cognition, judgment and insight. So these areas we have to cover while doing mental status examination or while writing mental status examination. So first thing is appearance. So this appearance checking is very much important because a person suffering with a mental health problem will show loss of interest, lack of personal hygiene, less grooming, very tired while looking, etc. So general appearance can say a lot about a person. So the first thing in mental status examination or the first component of mental status examination is check the appearance or observe the appearance. Under appearance, you have to check some few things. First thing is general appearance of the person. General appearance of the person. Second thing is clothing. What type of clothing they are wearing? Posture and gait. Grooming or personal hygiene. Evidence of self-harm. Height and weight. So this many things specifically you have to notice and you have to mention in the appearance component of mental status examination. So first component is appearance. Under appearance, you have to write about general appearance, how the patient look like, clothing, what type of clothing they are wearing, posture and gait, how they are in their posture, steady or imbalanced, grooming, personal hygiene, they are neat and clean and tidy or very dirty or not worried about and careless in their dressing and no hygiene whatever it is that you have to write evidence of self-harm any kind of cut or wound in any part of their body especially in the visible areas then height of the person and weight of the person next component is motor behavior so the next heading which we supposed to write is motor behavior so this motor behavior checking will helps to understand whether the patient is restless and whether the patient is maintaining eye contact or not. Eye contact is very important to understand the mental status of a person. If we have good eye contact, it indicates we have a proper mental health. If you are not maintaining eye contact, it indicates the person is having some severe mental problem. So eye contact, that is very, very important. So under motor behavior, you have to check eye contact. If the person is maintaining eye contact, you can, can write maintained proper eye contact. Otherwise, you have to write the person is not maintaining eye contact. The next thing is facial expression. What type of facial expression? Angry, irritable, restless, tired, whatever it is that you have to write there under facial expression. Next thing is psychomotor activity. Psychomotor activity means psycho plus motor activity. Means slowing down of thought and the reduction of physical movement in an individual. That is known as psychomotor activity. So how the person is talking and how the person is behaving and what is the thought process and that time how the person is behaving, activity of their body. So all the things you have to observe and write under psychomotor activity in a simple way you can write if it is slow or increased. If it is slow means you can write slow. If it is increased and very active and very fast they are replaying back means you can write increased psychomotor activity or slowed psychomotor activity. So under motor behavior, you have to write eye contact, facial expression, psychomotor activity. So first heading is general appearance. Second thing is motor behavior. Then under motor behavior, few more things you have to check body language of the person. 
whether the body language is like a normal person or some unusual body language they are maintaining while talking to you just uh, and any special mannerism they have like uh, always uh, shaking their hand while talking or shaking their head uh, while talking kind of mannerisms then level of arousal so what is arousal means how we respond to any stimuli or stimulation i'm asking some question very calm and quiet way replying back means you can write level of arousal is calm agitated and aggressive while talking means you can write agitated or aggressive then ability to follow request like i'm asking some question and you are replying back in a normal way you're replying back means you have the ability to follow the request. Then rapport and engagement, how the patient is in, engaging with the discussion or while doing the conversation. So this many things you have to write, specifically you have to write under motor behavior. So first thing is general appearance. Second thing is motor behavior. And the next thing or next component is speech. Assessing speech is very important because it will help to understand the level of communication and language development and the quality and the content of the speech will provide a lot of information about the thought process of the person. So assessing speech is very, very important in vendor status examination to understand the actual mental stage of the person. Under speech, you have to assess some specific things like speed of the speech, rate of speech, quantity of speech, turn of speech or tone of speech, volume of speech and fluency and rhythm of speech. So these many things you have to check under speech. Under first thing, under speed of speech, you have to check accelerated speech, racing speech or retarded speech. So accelerated speech means very quick speech. Racing speech means fast speech. And retarded speech means very slow speech. So you have to check either it is accelerated or racing or retarded. So that is the thing you have to assess under speed of speech. Second thing is rate of speech. Under rate of speech, you have to check either it is a pressured speech or a slowed speech. Pressure while talking. Too much stress they are giving. Irritability while expressing each word. Pressure. Then very slow or not. So under rate of speech, you have to check pressured speech or slowed speech. Then next thing is quantity of speech quantity means how they are talking how much they are talking for one question in which length they are maintaining the answer in one word or two word or lot of answers for simple question that you have to check under quantity of speech minimal speech excessive speech or complete absence of speech so these three things you have to check under quantity of speech so next thing is tone of speech in tone of speech you have to check either it is monotonous speech or tremulous speech monotonous in single tone that means dull unchanging tone of speech or tremulous speech that means excited vibrant or fearful or talking with anxiety so all these things will check under tone of speech so in tone of speech you have to check or you have to write either it is monotonous speech or tremulous speech so that is the next stage in speech Next thing which we supposed to check in the speech is volume of speech. In the volume of speech, you have to check either loud voice or quiet voice. Next is fluency and rhythm of speech. There you have to check articulate, clear or slurred. What is the articulation or how is the articulation? Clearly they are specifying each word and articulation is in a fluency or not. Then clear speech or slurred speech. So these three things you have to check under fluency and rhythm of speech. So this many things you have to check under speech. Next component is affect and mood. So what is affect and what is mood that we should understand before going to check affect and mood. So affect means or affect represent an immediately expressed and observed emotion. Immediately expressed and observed emotion like weather, like uh, for example, the patient's facial expression. That is an example for affect, immediately expressed one or what we can observe, that is affect. And what is mood means? Mood represents a sustained emotion present over a prolonged period of time, like climate. So affect and mood like weather and climate. Mood represents the 
sustained emotion present over a long period of time. So that is the difference between affect and mood. So we will see in affect. Under affect, you need to check type of affect and range of affect. Two things you have to check. They are type of affect and range of affect. Type of affect. Under type of affect, you have to check either it is flat, shallow or frustrated. Flat means lack of emotion. While talking without emotion, they are talking means that is flat affect. Shallow affect means little emotion, very little emotion. And frustrated means blurred and no emotion or la lack of emotion. Next is range of effect. So under effect, you have to check type of effect and range of effect. Under range of effect, you have to check either it is normal, expensive or blended. Normal means the normal facial expression without any construction, without any blended effect, without any angry. Normal facial expression and body movement while talking means you, have, you can write normal effect. Expansive means it involves extreme expression of emotion. Happiness means like jumping, dashing and talking. Sadness means by crying and talking means that is expansive effect. Blended means it is the reduction in the intensity of an individual's emotional response like i this is not happy this is not sad in the middle that is blended mixed expansive and normal emotions together means that is blended effect so these two things you have to check under effect next is mood under mood you have to check anxious depressed or dysphoric or euphoric anxious depressed dysphoric or euphoric so you know the meaning of anxiety and you know the meaning of depression then what is dysphoric or euphoric means dysphoric means sadness heaviness numbness and euphoric means exaggerated or extremely positive sense of happiness dysphoric means sadness and numbness without any emotions sitting and no response or very less response Euphoric means over activities, over excitement, over sense of happiness. That is euphoric. So under mood, you have to write either the patient is anxious, depressed, euphoric or dysphoric. Next component is thought. Under thought, you have to check the flow of thought and content of thought. Under flow of thought, you have to check circumstantial thought. That means no point is talking. Then tangential thought, that means move your thought from one thought to other thought. Then flight of ideas, that means rapidly shifting ideas and topics. Then perseveration, that means repetition of some responses like word sentence. And neologism, neologism means new words formation, new vocabulary while talking. So this is the first thing you have to check in thought. Next is content of thought. Content of thought. Under content of thought, you have to check thought insertion, thought withdrawal, and thought broadcasting. Thought insertion means others' thoughts are entering into patient mind. To understand that, you can ask a question like, do you think people can put ideas in your head? Then thought withdrawal. That means thought can be removed or taken out from the patient's mind. For that, you can ask the questions like, have you ever felt like people have removed memories from your mind? The next is thought broadcasting. That means believe that others can hear the patient's thoughts. For that, you can ask the question, do you ever feel like others can hear what you're thinking? So these three things you have to check under content of thought. Thought insertion, thought withdrawal, and thought broadcasting. Next, apart from that, you have to check whether the patient is having suicidal thoughts and violent thoughts. To understand this, we can ask the questions like, are you worried about anything? Do things seem unreal to you? Do you ever think about ending of your life? Have you ever felt your life was not worth living? Have you ever attempted to end your life or committed suicide? or try suicide so these are all the questions also you can understand whether the patient is having suicidal thought or violent thought next component is perception under perception you have to check hallucination illusion and delusion hallucination illusion and delusion so what is hallucination hallucination means perception of having seen heard touch taste or smell something that was not actually there 
there are mainly different auditory hallucination visual hallucination tactile hallucination gestatory hallucination all these hallucinations or any one or two type of hallucinations we can see in most of the psychiatric conditions so hallucination means perception of having seen heard touched tasted or smell something so if you if they are having or seeing something which we cannot see means that is visual hallucination they can hear something which we can't hear means that is auditory hallucination they can they are feeling a touch touch or sense of touch which we cannot feel means that is tactile they can taste something which we cannot taste means that is gestatory hallucination so that you have to check and the perception next is illusion illusion means min misinterpretation of real sensory stimulus for example at night tree branch look like ghost or rope look like snake so that is illusion to understand that you can ask the questions like do you ever see hear or smell feel something different did you think this was real at the time or do you still believe it was real can you guess the highest of building so that kind of questions you can ask to understand the hallucination illusion next is delusion delusions means false fixed belief for example like fear of being poisoned fear of being pointed fear of being stabbed etc so under delusion you there are some specific delusions are there so you have to check either the patient is having delusion of persecution that means someone is mistreating them delusion of grandiosity that means they having relationship with famous personality they will say that they have relationship with famous personality celebrities etc then jealous partner is unfaithful like that a feeling they have always then somatic some serious health problems they have like that they will complain and they will tell all the pathophysiology of the problems then bizarre delusion that means someone or one is controlling their mind their mind is controlled by someone and they will explain the things everything in a very detailed way so you have to check the patient is having delusion illusion hallucination or illusion under perception next component is cognition so what is cognition cognition refers to the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought experience and the senses learning is an example for cognition so under cognition we need to do basic test like orientation test like ask the time place persons situation then we need to ask the question like what is the time in which place you are staying and who are you so this questions will helps to understand whether the cognitive process of the person is normal whether the patient is oriented or not next thing under cognition is attention and concentration to understand attention and concentration you can ask to immediately repeat the words then random letter test like examiner says each letter one at a time like b c b d c b t t c d then the patient raises finger for each of these three b's when the examiner is telling b the patient will raise his hand so kind of tests then digit span test patient repeats the series of number from start 1 to 3 3 to 5 5 to 6 again from 6 to 1 so these kind of tests will help to understand attention and concentration of the patient then to check the short term memory we can ask about the current events such as who is the president recent events in your life such as recent trips attended functions etc that also you have to check under this cognition next thing is insight and judgment that is the next component and the last component of mental status examination what is insight insight means our wisdom or whether we can determine the truth of facts behind a problem to understand the wisdom of a person you can ask some questions like what is the cause of your problem or do you want to help from your problem or do you want to help for your problem if they are answering in a proper way you can say that they have proper insight otherwise you can write they have a lack of insight that is first section second is judgment it assess the patient's general problem solving capacity or problem solving ability for that you can ask the question like what would you do if you see an accident in front of you if they are judging the situation in the proper way you can write the patient is having proper judgment capacity and problem solving ability otherwise you can write the patient is showing lack of problem solving ability 
So this is about my status examination and at last you have to write a summary. So this uh, screen is showing an example for summary. For example, the client is 25 year old woman who is obese. Her general appearance is normal. She is cooperative with the interviewer. Her mood and affect are depressed and anxious. Her flow of thought is coherent and her thought content reveals fields of low, so low self-esteem. She is shown symptoms of visual and auditory hallucination that are self-demeaning. Her orientation is good. She knows the current date, place and person. Recent and remote memory are not correct. The client shows some insight and judgment regarding her illness and need for help so like that you have to write a summary at the end of the Menda status examination so this is about Menda status examination Menda status examination include some particular components you have to specifically systematically write all these components while writing your Menda status examination of your patient including summary hope you understand guys thank you